Hello everyone. It is uh, Tuesday, January the 19th, uh, 2016, about 7 a.m. And this is DelrayVAWeather.com. Uh, this is going to be our morning update about the uh, uh, upcoming blizzard uh, for Friday and Saturday uh, here in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, the um, uh, GFS uh, 0Z actually showed more snow uh, for uh, uh, for the storm uh, compared to the 18Z yesterday, but uh, actually now the 6Z is, is back uh, with a little less snow again. Uh, so it's it's uh, the total accumulation is going up and down with each uh, subsequent model run. And it's something we need to keep an eye on. Uh, the uh, North American model, the NAM, the, and some of the shorter range models are just starting to cover the period of, um, of the, the storm. Right now, NAM looks like it's, uh, back, uh, it, it's covering up to about 2 p.m. on um, Friday. And um, uh, certainly by the end of the day or early tomorrow morning, it's going to cover pretty much all of the, the storm event. <clears throat> okay, what you see on the screen uh, here is um, uh, the GFS uh, 6Z analysis of the type of pre precipitation that we would have uh, about midnight on uh, uh, on uh, be Friday night, Saturday morning. It's midnight there. And um, if you can look at the, the uh, where the green uh, transitions to the blue-purple area here, and let me see if I can enlarge this a little bit so you can see it better. I know I, some people mentioned that it was kind of hard to see. Okay, um, the freezing line uh, it goes just east of Alexandria, and uh, if you notice uh, this transition here, this is only about 30 miles, so we're talking about a 30-mile shift of this storm uh, to the west uh, is going to actually bring only rain at this time. Uh, if, if we get a 30-mile shift to the east, we're going to have a heck of a lot more snow. And uh, uh, so that's the, uh, the problem right now uh, as far as uh, predicting actual snow depths. Uh, and we're probably not going to have a good handle on the, the snow until... Um, uh, until Wednesday, and uh, in all likelihood, uh, the, when I make my uh, final uh, range prediction, it's going to be big, uh, because um, this storm, the way the storm is behaving, uh, it's really hard to tell if it's going to shift and, and end up with mostly a, a winter mix or, or rain or freezing rain or something like that. Okay, let me back this back up so we go back to 100. Okay, now I want to show you a couple other things here. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the the College of DuPage Next Gen Weather Lab. I watch this all the time. And if you notice here, um, uh, this it compares subsequent model runs. And if you DC, let me see if this this will work. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's see if I enlarge this a little bit. Yeah, and let me see if I can bring this up a little bit. Okay, DC is right in this area here. If you look at, at right in this area where the little double arrows are, that's DC. This is the 5400 um, uh, uh, thickness layer is really a demarcation between rain and snow often. And in this case, uh, for the zero Z, we are actually a little south of that line. Even though the zero Z showed all snow, it definitely is really close uh, as far as what's going to happen uh, overhead. Uh, the 18 Z was much more d definite, but uh, you know, we're, we're a little south of this critical thickness line. So uh, some of these uh, snow depth uh, maps you're seeing uh, being posted on Twitter uh, may really overstate uh, the actual amount. So we need to keep that in mind. Uh, it's not, you know, it's still going to be uh, a major 
uh, a winter storm. It it might very well rank up in the like the top uh, dozen storms that we've had uh, since the uh, 1970s, certainly. Um, but you know you should keep that in mind when you see these uh, uh, horrendous large uh, uh, snow depth uh, figures. Okay, and speaking of horrendous large snow, snow depth figures, uh, I want to show you this. This is the um, uh, uh, Canadian model. Uh, it's the midnight model. It's the uh, Zero Z. And um, uh, up until this run, it's been pretty conservative. It's been saying about 12 inches for the DC area. Uh, let me see if I can enlarge this a little bit so you can see it better. Okay. This is uh, Alexandria, right where the arrow is. And uh, uh, if you, as you can see, the Canadian model is now saying 25 inches uh, of snow here. Uh, up until this run, it was saying 12 inches. Uh, what you need to keep in mind when you see these numbers, these are, it's actually raw uh, snow totals. It's not the actual depth that you're going to see on the ground. Uh, it might be. It's possible. But uh, in all likelihood, this snow is going to be compacted as it falls. So when you, if you go out in your yard with a, a yardstick or a foot ruler or something like that, uh, I, I seriously doubt whether you're going to see anywhere near this depth. It's going to be less. Uh, also, this doesn't factor in the actual uh, snow to liquid ratio. It makes an assumption about it that it's about 10 to 1 or 11 to 1. And um, it may not be. It may actually be 9 to 1. Or it could be 25 to 1. Uh, we actually don't know at this time. And um, uh, so this number uh, is uh, not necessarily accurate. But the thing that is important for the to get from the Canadian model, this run, is it is now in agreement with the other two models. Uh, so that gets a much more confidence that we're going to have a significant snowstorm uh, in the DC area. Uh, I, I'm quite confident the total will be a foot or more. Uh, that I can absolutely say right now that it's going to be a foot or more. Uh, and um, as far as uh, whether we're going to see these two feet ranges, I'm still not convinced. Okay. All right. Let's go to. Let me. Let me. So we don't get mi mixed up. Let me drop this back to 100%. Okay. All right. Uh, this is the GFS uh, 6Z model. It's the latest the model run. Uh, again, uh, DC is right here, and I'm going to enlarge this so you can see it a little bit better. Let's see. There we go. Okay, this, if you can see this, uh, right printed over where the Potomac River is, uh, this is saying 19 inches, 18 inches. But the other thing I want you to really look at this is that, again, the transition, even in this uh, 6Z model, is really uh, quite dramatic. I mean, we're talking maybe 60 miles. It goes from virtually no snow to 19 inches. So, again, there's a very small, uh, a very high gradient of snow depth here. And it's not going to take much time, much distance shift of this to uh, to really change the total snow depth. The other thing to keep in mind is the storm that's going to produce this snow hasn't even reached the west coast of the United States yet. Uh, it's probably going to come on shore today, but uh, you know it's still out in the Pacific, uh, and uh, uh, you know anything can happen between uh, uh, now and then. Though the confidence are getting more and more that we're going to see a significant snow. Again, that's the thing to keep in mind. Okay, uh, this, let me go back and I keep forgetting to put this back to 100%. Otherwise, we get messed up later. Okay, let's see. All right, this is the European model. Um, take a brief look, but it basically says the same thing. 
Uh, it's showing a much bigger area out here in the panhandle of West Virginia that's going to get really uh, uh, dumped on. It, that's also shown in the in the GFS, but it, uh, it, the area here is bigger in the in the uh, uh, European model. Uh, it's showing in in the city about 24 inches, which is similar to what we were seeing in the Canadian model. But if you notice again, huge gradient. 60 miles, it goes from nothing to 22 inches. Okay. All right, let's see what else we got. We don't need that one. Okay, this is a good one. Uh, this is the GFS uh, 6Z mediagram. And if you notice here, the mediagram is showing 19 inches uh, total snowfall. A uh, little bit different than what the uh, snow map said in the uh, 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 that we had looked at previously, and this is factoring in uh, some other probably compaction a little bit. Uh, so, uh, you know, what it's saying here is uh, potentially 19 inches by the time the uh, the snow stops. It's also showing, which was not shown by the way in the in last night's uh, 18Z run that we remain below freezing over the whole snow period. So there is no indication of uh, a period of, um, of sleet or freezing rain uh, in this, this run. And this is an aside, I want to show you this. Uh, GFS is showing we're going to have another snow event uh, sometime around the 27th, 28th period here. Uh, it's going to be uh, potentially believe it or not, another 10 or, or 11 inches at that time. Uh, but again, that, that's real far off, but something we're going to have to keep an eye on a, in, a, in a few days. Okay. Um, not to swamp everybody with the, this news. Uh, okay. This is the European mediagram. Um, again, it's showing, uh, European showing we remain below freezing the whole time. Uh, it's showing 19, but we top off at about 24 or 25 inches. Um, and again, mm, I'm not real sure about that yet, uh, but uh, it's something, again, to keep in mind. However, the European is showing this period, uh, the 27th, 28th, no snow. So, um, so the models are not in agreement with that future uh, storm. Okay, we're going to take a look at the Iowa State mediagram. This is, shows the, uh, the two previous uh, GFS run, runs, that's the 0Z and the 6Z. And um, uh, here is uh, the totals, and let me see if I can move this up a little bit. Oh, this doesn't work, so I'm, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to zoom this and still display everything. But um, uh, let me just describe what it's showing. Okay, this top line is somewhere around 24, 25 inches. That was the 0Z uh, GFS, uh, uh, actually uh, assuming 11 to 1 uh, snow ratio. And uh, uh, if you look at uh, these uh, yellow lines, or this, this uh, dark line here, this is the 6Z uh, 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 with 11 to 1 uh, uh, snow to liquid uh, ratio. And so uh, in that six hour period, we dropped, we went from 25 inches down to about 16 inches uh, with the latest run. Uh, and, uh, and that's the variation we're starting to see uh, in each subsequent model run, is that, you know, some runs are going to show it, the storm uh, a little further east, some are going to show it a little further west. So uh, what I usually do is I usually look at um, the boundary that we have over the two model runs. So uh, what this is this is saying basically, uh, right now it, it would be safe to, to predict um, between 12 and 25 inches, uh, a big variation. Uh, the mean, uh, if you look at the mean uh, with Cobb average, which is, Cobb is the, the way of calculating the snow liquid ratio that I actually prefer uh, it's, it's saying that the average, uh, if you look at both of those model runs, would come out to about 18 or 19 inches. So, uh, you know, as far as uh, a realistic uh, upper boundary, I actually think that 19 or 20 is an upper boundary, and um, 
uh, and about a, a foot as the lower boundary uh, is probably realistic right now. Okay, let's look at the buff kit analysis of, uh, of this storm. And uh, again, this is the 6Z GFS uh, data. That's, that's what's uh, being displayed. And uh, this is an analysis. This is called a sounding. It's the uh, air, uh, the characteristics of various parameters in the air. Uh, over uh, Reagan National Airport. And um, this, uh, just to give you a little tour of this thing, I haven't done that in the past. Uh, this 50 up here, uh, this means 50,000 feet. This 5 here means 5,000 feet. So you can basically look at what the predicted temperatures are at all altitudes over Washington Reagan National Airport. Um, what I have, I have this set, set for midnight on, on Friday night, Saturday morning. And uh, this is when the potentially the, the biggest period, uh, or heaviest or highest rate of snowfall will occur. And we're, we're talking, uh, you know, in the, uh, you know, we have the three dots. And so the snow is really going to come down pretty significant around midnight, uh, according to this run of the model. But the other thing to look at. <clears throat> is this uh, line right here. Uh, this diagonal line that comes up this way is uh, the zero centigrade line. This shows what the where the what altitude the freezing points would be um, at the where the freezing points are at various heights above uh, Reagan National Airport. And if you look here uh, right here the the uh, these two red and, uh, and green lines touch the, um, the uh, freezing line. And that means that at this point uh, in time, <clears throat> it's very close to switching over to sleet or uh, freezing rain. Uh, probably sleet since we're, we're below freezing all the way down the rest of the air column. And um, so what we're, what we're talking about is that the model is still showing the potential for a period of sleet uh, around midnight uh, on uh, uh, the Friday, Saturday morning uh, period. Uh, if we move this around a little bit, uh, you're going to see that this line pulls away. Uh, this is about 9 p.m. We still have heavy snow at 9 p.m. Uh, if we go back to that midnight period, uh, let's see here. Midnight period, we're touching, getting real cl close to crossing that freezing line. And if we go a little further, we pull away again. So what it's talking about is that during the, the heaviest snow period, um, uh, it, it has a chance of switching over to sleet. Uh, and that's because we're so close to that uh, rain snow line. Okay, let me just go to the overview a little bit. Kind of interesting. Uh, this is kind of interesting. This is showing uh, that, let's see, well, I have this set for Cobb 11. If we do some analysis here, let me see if I can enlarge this a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, if we um, do a summation over the, uh, this is with Cobb 11. This is showing 17 inches, basically. Uh, if we do a Cobb 5, which is these you know, ways of calculating what the snow to liquid ratio can be. And uh, the Cobb approach uh, is dynamic. It, it allows throughout the whole storm that the uh, snow to liquid ratio can change, and which is what you actually see. Uh, it's much more realistic to say that the uh, snow to liquid ratio is driven by the current parameters uh, in the atmosphere rather than just assuming an average uh, climatological average of, of 11 or 12 or, or 9 or whatever. Okay, this is Cobb 5 and this is showing this is showing about 19. We sort of peak here uh, uh, about 19.5 uh, and then the compaction drives it back down to 9, 19 as the snow tapers off. So, uh, I mean, this is showing like 19 at Cobb uh, 5. If we do a climatological average, which is about 11 uh, for National Airport, uh, this is showing about 
15.7, the peaks at about 15.7. And the max T, which I don't like actually, but well, let's look at it. Uh, this is showing about, it peaks out at about 17. So, uh, you know, we're talking about realistically <clears throat> between 12 and 19 inches at this point. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to have the benefit of a lot of the NAM and, and some other uh, short range models to see what they're predicting as far as the snowfalls. Um, and so by by probably this time, um, or certainly after uh, uh, noon tomorrow, we'll have a much more accurate uh, uh, picture of what the rain, potential possible probable ranges would be for Alexandria, Virginia, and for all practical purposes, Arlington and, and the District of Columbia. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if you have any questions, just give me a tweet at Pat Penn, that's P-A-T-P-E-N-D. As an aside, again, today is the day to start making some preparations for a, <clears throat> a storm that is going to probably keep you in all weekend. Um, I would definitely, if you need, uh, you know, you have prescription medications, I would make sure you have a, a supply that will get you through the period. Um, I would uh, make sure you have enough uh, food uh, to get you through the period. Oh, and I also should mention, there's, there's going to be wind here. And the wind is probably going <clears> to <throat> potentially gust to 55 mile an hour. Probably it's going to happen early morning Saturday, around midnight maybe. <clears throat> there is a good chance <clears throat> that we're going to have power outages. So uh, I would assume <clears throat> that you're going to have power outages and I would take whatever preparations you normally take uh, whenever you get up, you know, high wind warnings or anything like that. Uh, <clears throat> might want to check batteries <clears throat> and, uh, and things, uh, things like that. Okay, that's it. And I'll uh, probably do an update later this afternoon. Bye-bye.